If your organization has multiple bounded contexts, and ideally these are separated, there can be confusion when the different teams are talking to one another. Again, DDD focuses at least as much on effective communication as it does on anything specifically related to the code we produce. Evans recommends using context maps to visualize and demonstrate to all teams where the boundaries between their contexts lie. Think about a complex topographical map. It will frequently include a legend, like the one shown here, in order to explain what each of the lines and symbols on the map mean. However, this legend is only valid within the context of the map with which it appears. Trying to use this legend on another map would be confusing at best. A good first step for an existing application is to create a map that shows how things are. Remember that the names of your contacts are also important, as you'll refer to them frequently when discussing different parts of the application. It may be that things are not as separate as they should be, and that's worth noting. If you have separate teams responsible for different contexts that share resources, it's important that each team understands which aspects of the application they can change on their own, and which are shared dependencies they'll need to coordinate with other teams to avoid breaking things. If we look at these two sets of concepts, we can see some obvious overlap. For one thing, client appears in both contexts, but we know that for appointment scheduling, we really only care about the client's name, whereas in the billing system, they'll want additional information like address and payment details. However, although the details involve vary, we know that Mr. Jones, the client on the left, is the same actual person as Mr. Jones, the client on the right. However, we also have a concept of notifications on both sides, and in this case, they're referring to different things. On the left, we're talking about sending a notification when appointment is booked, as a reminder, and on the right, we're talking about notifying the client that their payment was received, or perhaps that it's past due. Especially in smaller organizations, it's common to have one team responsible for several contexts of the same overall application. In such cases, it's also common for the team to use a single code base for the bounded context that they're working with and store it in a single repository, such as this GitHub repository. Usually, there will also be a shared database. As we've already noted, this is not ideal since it makes it much more difficult to maintain the boundaries between the separate contexts. Part of creating a context map involves explicitly identifying its boundaries. If we try to draw the boundaries around these two bounded contexts, we can see there are now several resources that belong to each bounded context. This isn't ideal if the two contexts really are meant to be kept separate. In the ideal case, for a large, complex system, we would have bounded contexts like these with their own teams, code bases, and database. For instance, on the left we have an appointment scheduler application. It's being worked on by Team Awesome, and they're storing all of their code in their own repository called Vet Appointment Sched. And of course, this application has its own database. This team is free to change anything they want with their model or any other part of their system without worrying about breaking anything outside the boundaries for the team on the right, which is working on a billing system and their team has decided to call themselves Team Ultimate, store their code in a repository called Vet-Billing, and of course, using their own database. By having this separation, this can greatly increase team velocity and reduce integration bugs. Of course, you're probably wondering how the two systems will interoperate. There are a number of patterns that can be applied to enable this kind of integration. We won't be covering all of them in this course, but one question that frequently comes up is how to share cross-cutting concerns, like authentication. For this scenario, a common approach is to designate these shared concepts or resources as what we call a shared kernel. Team Awesome and Team Ultimate agree to share the subset of the domain model. Since they're sharing it, they also agree not to change it without coordinating with the other team first. Frequently, the shared kernel will either be a part of the customer's core domain or some set of generic subdomains, or even both, though it can be any part of the model that both teams require. Using a shared kernel is a trade-off between code reuse and consistency, and the overhead involved in integrating changes to the shared kernel across multiple teams and bounded contexts. It works best when the shared model is relatively stable.